Hey, is this thing on? Hello, hello, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So you say that you want to become the best version of yourself, you want to level up, you want to improve in life, yet for some reason, it's still not happening. That's because you're still holding on to past versions of yourself. And honestly, in the words of Cam Tucci from TikTok, I'm tired of seeing it. I'm tired of seeing it, so here we go. I'm tired of hearing it. At this point, we've gotta let go of every single thing that is holding you back from becoming the best version of yourself. So in this video, we're gonna go into five different things that you need to let go of in order to become that best version of yourself. A lot of times when we think about evolving or enhancing our lives or leveling up, we think about the things that we need to add, but you cannot add what's going to help you get to that next place in your life if you are still holding on to things that are literally dragging you down. So let's go ahead and get started with the first thing that you need to let go of, which are old habits. Habits of everything. Your poor eating habits, your negative self-talk, your inconsistent routines, and your frankly neglect to show up for yourself. If you're saying that you wanna become the best version of yourself or a better version of yourself or continually work on improving your life, then why are you holding on to those old habits that clearly have not served you? You can see from the past that this has not helped you to make any progress toward your goals. So then why are you still stuck in those old patterns? For example, if you're like, look, I wanna have these health and wellness goals, I wanna optimize my health, feel my absolute best. Okay, then why are you gonna go and literally put trash food into your body? If you want to feel better, you have to be better. You have to fuel yourself with better. So yes, while that may require more work, you're not gonna be able to break the old habit if you are not disciplined and consistent with putting that work in. And honestly, there are so many resources. I always like really lean into resources because I feel like in some circumstances, people literally do not know. They have no way forward. They don't have a resource to help them. But the fact that you're here and you're watching this YouTube video means that you do have access to at least some resources in life. So there is no reason why you are stuck in those old habits, like things like negative self-talk. There are so many free YouTube videos, podcasts, and things that you can listen to to help yourself get into a practice of talking to yourself positively, which is going to build up your self-love, which in turn, is going to build up your self image so you won't be in that cycle of negatively speaking about yourself or even thinking about yourself and so with all of the habits that you have currently adopted I want you to sit down and literally make a list what are my bad habits right now how long have I been invested in this habit and what am I going to do to change it and every single day you need to work toward moving away from that old habit don't fall back into those patterns because it's comfortable or because it's easy for you. Put forth the effort to actually move forward. Yes, it's gonna require that you try. No, it's not always going to be easy. However, once you see the results, the benefits and the progress, you're definitely gonna understand that it's worth it. The second thing that you have to fully let go of if you wanna become the best version of yourself is negative influences. I'm talking family, friends, and environments. If there is a place where you know if I go here, I'm gonna fall back into my old habits. I'm gonna pick up patterns that are just easy and comfortable for me, but that are not serving me and my growth and where I want to be in life, then don't go to those places. Like at this point in life, if you're like, look, I'm not the friend that like always wants to go out, do a ton of drinking or get into activities that really aren't going to be beneficial to me in any way. So when your friends invite you to come out, and do a bunch of drinking and get into activities that aren't serving you in any way, your answer has to be no. It's not like, oh, well, okay, I'll go, I'll just go for a little while, or I don't wanna hurt their feelings. No, you need to be selfish and think about yourself. If you want to grow personally, sometimes you've gotta leave that environment behind, but also the people who are trying to pull you back into that negative space that is not helping you to grow. Now, I feel like letting go of people is the hardest part on the journey of self-discovery and growth and becoming the best version of yourself because you're so used to having them in your life. And a lot of times you can start to think that you need to have them in your life. But actually what I want you to do is to visualize. Visualize the life that you want for yourself. And when you visualize that, you're probably not going to see them in it. 
Why? Because where you're going is an elevation. It's a new level. You're moving forward. You're moving up in life. And so if that person is stagnant, they don't want better for themselves. And in reality, they don't want better for you because they're hoping that you're going to stay in that repetitive pattern that's keeping you down so y'all can be down together. You have to let them go. I don't care if it's family or friends that you've known for so long, you grew up together. If they are not helping you become the best version of yourself, they're not encouraging you, uplifting you, supporting you, walking hand in hand with you on your growth journey, they have to go. Cut them off, set them free. It doesn't have to be a big, dramatic, negative thing, but you have to choose yourself and you have to realize that they are literally tethering you down when you are ready to move on to greater heights. And another negative influence that sometimes we may not notice as much is media. What are we consuming? TV, movies, podcasts, social media. Follow people who are really going to help you grow up and glow up. People who have things that you're aspiring to have, who can inspire you in some type of way or motivate you or make you feel like you're seen and heard and supported or someone that you can connect with. If you're constantly just scrolling and seeing people whose lives are completely unattainable to the point where it makes you feel inferior or less than, you don't need to be following them. If it's people who have those habits and influences that we talked about in step one, who maybe you see it and you're like, well, that does look like fun. Maybe I'll just go out and try it for a second. You don't need to be following them. Again, you need to consume media that is going to encourage and uplift you. Other than that, you have to let it go. The next thing that has to go goodbye forever if you are trying to become the best version of yourself are excuses. And we can make excuses in so many different areas. I actually found myself making an excuse just yesterday. I'm trying to be really consistent and back on track with my workout routine, working out at least four days a week. And yesterday I was like, well, I got up early, I had a long day, I took care of some other things, I still need to make dinner, I wanna do the dishes and clean the kitchen before I go to bed, so I'll just skip my workout and I'll pick it back up tomorrow. But no, I ended up working out at 10.30 at night because I don't wanna fall into those old habits or old routines, when I don't wanna fall into a really bad habit of making excuses for myself to the point where I start to believe them. So ask yourself, why can't I wake up a little bit earlier? Why can't I have a routine of exercising and moving my body four to five times a week? Why can't I replace my low vibe habits or television viewing with things that are positive and uplifting and encouraging that are going to help me elevate to the point where I wanna be in life? If you don't have an answer for yourself, then that means that you just need to get out there and do it. A lot of times with excuses, we make them because we're like, I wanna kind of rationalize or create a sympathetic situation for myself, when in reality, there is no need for that. At the end of the day, you just have to get up and do it. And at some point in life, that is going to involve pushing yourself. Now, I never wanna encourage you to push yourself in an unhealthy way or to an unhealthy limit, but there's a really fine line there because you can say, well, I don't wanna overdo it, I wanna give myself grace, which is so important, but you can't give yourself too much grace because then grace turns into slack and slack turns into not doing it at all. So really be honest with yourself and work on adding disciplined routines into your life so that when those excuses pop up in your mind, it's not even something that you consider. You dismiss it immediately, you figure out how to reroute, redirect your day in order to make sure that you can accomplish what you set out to do because then you know it's a part of a larger goal that's helping you become the best version of yourself. Now, the next thing that you have to let go of to become the best version of yourself has more to do with the outward appearance. A lot of times when we think about like a reinvention or leveling up, we also think about personal aesthetics. How do we look? How are we presenting ourselves? So if you want to be the best version of yourself, you have an idea of who that person is, what they wear, how they dress, what scent of perfume they have on, how they do their hair, what type of shoes they wear, how they spend their day, then in that case, you need to let go of the old aesthetics. And aesthetics can include so many things from your daily activities, what types of things do you enjoy doing, your clothing, what are you wearing, how are you dressing? Also, how you carry yourself. If you wanna improve your posture, and that's part of like this new person, the best version that you wanna evolve into, 
that's an important piece. What can you do to improve your posture? And also another really big one is how you speak to and interact with others. If you wanna be more tactful, more kind and thoughtful, then what are you going to do to make sure that happens? That was actually one of the biggest goals for myself over the past couple of years was trying to be more tactful because I am definitely like, that's not a choice I would make and I'm gonna tell you why. But a lot of times that can be hurtful to people or just they can take it very negatively even if I didn't intend for it to come across that way. And so with working toward being tactful, I had to put some restrictions on myself. If I'm thinking something in my mind, it does not need to come out of my mouth. And so one of the questions that I always ask is, is this necessary and is this going to solve anything? If I'm gonna say this thing and it's just not gonna go anywhere, it's not gonna create any solutions for anyone or help anyone in any way, it could even more so be detrimental, especially to like the relationship or the interactions or interpretations that person has or perspectives about me, I don't need to say it. There's no need to continually spew things out just for the sake of like filling space or saying something. So. I worked on becoming more tactful, literally thinking before I speak. It's a thing we hear from when we're kids, but I had to be very intentional about that because I knew the best version of myself was someone who was kind and compassionate and understanding. And I wanted that to be perceived by my actions and my speech as well. So think about what you can do to move forward into this new aesthetic. Create a Pinterest board or a mood board or a vision board of who that person is, especially for fun things like clothing and activities. Like I mentioned in a former video, I wanna become a tennis girly. So now when I'm looking for athleisure or athletic workout clothes, I'm looking for things that I can wear when I go play tennis. I'm looking up tennis courts that I can go practice on. And so if it's like, this is something that I really see that makes sense for me, I feel like it's gonna help me enhance who I am. Perfect, work toward it and let go of everything that is not leading you to becoming that version of yourself. So for example, if it's clothing, I know that I want my aesthetic and my clothing to be more streamlined and extremely clean and structured and a higher quality. So then if I see some low quality clothing, I'm not gonna go invest in it and spend money on that because it's not helping me get to where I wanna be and representing myself with that new aesthetic. Small things can make a huge impact when you start letting go of things that are holding you back in order to become the person that you deserve to be. And finally, the last thing we're gonna talk about in this video today that you have to let go of to become the best version of yourself is insecurity. And I'm talking about insecurity in so many different areas of your life. Career, relationships, finances, everything. If you feel down on yourself, that is clear and evident to everyone around you. That is what you're projecting. And people are gonna say, yeah, she's not ready for this, or she doesn't really want this, or we don't think she's the best fit because she doesn't seem to have that confidence. You need to walk into a room and exude a presence. Like, I am here, I know that I can do this, I know I am capable, and I can't wait to showcase just how amazing I am. So when we're thinking about things like relationships and friendships, People sense insecurity and unfortunately people who have terrible intentions, they seek out friendships with people who are insecure so that they can use them and get everything that they need and want from them and then not provide anything back. It is literally a one way street and that is not how relationships or friendships should ever be. So be aware, pay attention to how people are treating you, how they interact with you, how they show up for you, and the conversations that they have with you. You can tell if someone is sincerely interested in you and they really wanna see you grow and thrive and succeed and win in life. So surround yourself with those upbuilding people who are not going to prey on your insecurities. So then you can allow yourself time to continue to build and not fall back into that insecure space. And the same thing in your career as well. If a position needs to be filled, why can't it be you? Why can't you be the person that goes into that new role that creates change for an organization? Or if you want to create your own business, go out and start a YouTube channel and become a content creator. Why not? Do not let insecurities hold you back because there is someone else who may have 
potentially less talent or skills or abilities or experience in a certain area, but because they're like, yeah, I'm here, I'm confident, I am ready to share this with the world, they get the opportunity that really should have been meant for you. And I'm not saying that there's not space at the table for everyone, but if there's opportunities available, you need to throw your hat in the ring, you need to go for it. And honestly, that's one of the best ways to beat your insecurity is just exposure therapy putting yourself in those situations, trying even if you fail, even if you get rejected, but every single time building up your confidence, knowing that you have an amazing skill set, amazing personality, and other qualities that people are drawn to, whether as friends, as romantic partners, or in your career, and also in your finances. If you're being insecure about what you want in life or things that you think you don't deserve or can't have, that's gonna reflect in your financial situation as well. Why not dream big? Why not say, yes, I can go for this and then create a plan to actually bring that to fruition and get yourself to the place that you would like to be financially. In every single area of life, having confidence is going to be the key ingredient to help you become successful. So to wrap everything up, I really just want you to focus on the fact that growth, progress, success, moving forward and becoming the best version of yourself is completely possible. And first of all, it's something that you deserve. I want you to affirm yourself and say, I deserve to be happy in life. I deserve to be successful in life. I deserve to become the best version of myself and continue learning, growing and thriving and building even more success after I have reached that point. Thank you all so much for watching this video today. I will see you in the next one. If you are not part of the community, please make sure that you subscribe and drop a comment below everyone. How are you affirming yourself? What are you letting go of to work towards becoming the best version of yourself? Share your story, your journey. We can all encourage each other and hopefully find motivation to keep moving forward and embrace our best selves. Thank you so much for watching this video. Again, I will see you in the next one and goodbye. Please like, comment, and subscribe and follow me on Instagram at Affirmations with Amber.